Are you tired of dropping frames while streaming? I am. If so, stay tuned to learn how to optimize your internet for streaming in this two-part series. Streaming. No frame left behind. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna try to get rid of that pesky stream problem, dropped frames. In this video, we're gonna be covering the network side of things. And in part two, we're gonna be covering OBS and how to deal with some tips and tricks there to make that work better and not have dropped frames. And if you have dropped frames while streaming, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a little insight really quick. If you go live and every single time you go live, you immediately start dropping frames, it's probably settings inside of OBS and them not being configured right to the bitrate or the hardware that you have. Now, the problems that we're gonna really be trying to tackle today are kind of a little bit different, and that is just randomly while you're streaming, you start dropping frames. Some of those can be alleviated inside OBS, but a lot of them are gonna be network-sided, and that's why we're gonna be tackling those today. So without further ado, let's jump over to tip number one and get started. Tip number one is to get wired. Having a wired connection is still way more reliable than using Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has gotten a lot better, and if that's all you can use, go ahead and ignore this tip for right now, but maybe at some point in time, try to possibly see if there's a way to get a wired connection to you. There's other you know, standards that are out there. There's power um, or ethernet over power line and other things as well that can possibly bring you a more stable ethernet connection than using Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is just not as stable as having a wired connection. Tip number two is to cut it out. You ever seen um, Full House? They like cut it out, you know, that, that thing. Stop all programs that are currently using bandwidth. It doesn't matter if it's using upload or download. At some point in time, it's probably talking to the internet and still using that valuable upload speed that you need while you're streaming. And if you plan on playing video games as well, you need to factor that in. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the second video, part two, that is. I'll have it linked whenever it comes out. But essentially what we're gonna try to do is try to get rid of all unnecessary bandwidth. That means on the computer that you're streaming on, definitely go ahead and disable Windows updates. If you're using Windows or Mac OS or Linux, disable those updates and also go ahead and turn off just any unnecessary device. So if you have other devices in the house that are hogging up bandwidth, if you can't go ahead and turn them off, just try not to irritate anybody else that might be trying to use the internet. That's probably a smart idea. Tip number three is to restart your PC and your network equipment. This is something that I forget to do, and I really, with the internet provider I have, um, I just have to really just restart the internet every single time I plan on going live. For whatever reason, whenever it notices I'm using a bunch of upload, my internet just basically drops out from time to time within like 10 to 15 minutes of starting a stream. And I've basically noticed with my internet service provider, the best thing I can do is restart my internet before I go live. It is inconvenient, it is annoying. There are alternatives out there that might help you, like say taking um, a surge protector and flip that switch on and off. Give it about 10, 15 seconds before you turn it back on, but just make sure all your network equipment's in. And it's gonna refresh that connection to the internet service provider and hopefully keep you from dropping those precious frames because frame dropping is annoying and we want to avoid it at all cost. So do that and restarting your computer at the same time is probably not a bad idea as well. Number four is router configuration. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say this, not everybody is going to have the ability to adjust their router configuration. If you don't wanna buy networking equipment and you only have the modem um, with the router you know, built into it that the internet provider provides, then great. Don't worry about this tip because you're probably not gonna be able to adjust those settings. But if you do have your own router, there are things like network prioritization, device groups, and bandwidth allocation of where you can adjust those per groups and per device to make sure you have the bandwidth you need to live stream. The reason I'm not gonna go in depth to this is because each router and even each router from specific manufacturers could be very different in how those are set up and the specific names that they use. That's what's kind of annoying to me as an IT person. This manufacturer might use a completely different name for how they segregate those, you know, device allocation and bandwidth allocation compared to what this brand might use. And it's really annoying and frustrating for me. And I would do nothing but probably confuse some of you that aren't as tech savvy whenever it comes to the network side. 
but if you are comfortable with it, router configuration might be a process that might help you stop dropping frames. Tip number five is kind of a cop out, and that is just adjust stream settings. Part two is coming soon of where we go in depth into those settings, and I show you what to dial in inside of OBS to help you stop dropping frames while you're streaming. This is very important and in some ways might be more important to the reason you're dropping frames than any of the network stuff we're talking about. If you've got a gig fiber, a gig up and a gig down, these settings probably aren't the problem. They, they probably aren't the problem of what's causing you to drop frames. So be sure to get subscribed and um, be ready for that video because that video is going to come out soon. Uh, like I said, I've got a background in IT and networking. Um, computer management and stuff like that. So I deal with all this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And my goal is to hopefully help you learn a little bit and help your stream as well. So there we go. Plug succeeded. Tip number six is one that I hate saying because it's something that not everybody has the ability to do so. And that is sometimes it's just true. Your internet isn't good enough to stream, whether it is the bandwidth or the inconsistencies in quality. I've had internet service providers that have offered enough bandwidth to be able to stream on, but it was just not possible. I've set all the settings up on any kind of streaming program that I've tried. I've tried multiple streaming programs, and the quality of the internet service that was provided from the ISP, the internet service provider, just wasn't good enough. And sometimes the bandwidth isn't enough. And sometimes all you can do is upgrade your plan or go with a different internet service provider. And I know that's really also kind of another cop-out answer, but the thing is with it is sometimes it's just not good enough. Streaming at 480p might be something you're okay with, but sometimes even streaming at that with a two or a one megabit upload connection is just not going to cut it, even though it's something you might be able to make work. You're still probably going to have dropped frames and it's not going to be the best quality or the quality you might be satisfied with. Now, with that being said, this is not an exhausted list of things you can do to help make your internet better for streaming. And like I said, it comes down to what devices you're using. It comes down to what program you're using to stream, your internet service provider, the connections as far as router, cabling, switches, and all the other networking aspects of stuff that's involved from point A to point B, which is A is your computer and software, and B is the streaming platform. So... If you have any other tips that you want to share with people, let me know in the comment section down below and share it with everybody else. I'm pretty sure everybody would be happy to see any other tips that could help possibly make their live stream better and them stop dropping frames because that's what we're going to be trying to tackle inside of this series, streaming, no frame left behind. All right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level, get subscribed, all that other cool stuff. We've got that second video hopefully coming out very, very soon, and we're going to dive in, like I said, to all the OBS stuff. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.